This is a final lecture video on molecular geometry. And we're going to look at a couple of different topics. And the first one, three different topics, but the first one is what do you do about multiple bonds within uh, and, and determining the molecular geometry of molecules that have multiple bonds in it? And it's very simple. You simply take multiple bonds and you treat them as single electron pairs. So I'm going to take, treat a multiple bond as, being, as having a single electron pair. Let me give you an example. Let's take the CO2 molecule. Now, maybe take a second and make, uh, maybe pause the video. Draw the best Lewis structure for that. What you should get as the best Lewis structure for CO2 would look like this, where we have a carbon atom with double bonds to the oxygen and another pair of double bonds to the other oxygen. And the question is, is what would we call this molecule from a shape perspective? Well, we can go back to our table and what we looked at before. And in this case, we have two places we're putting electrons, right? Two places we're putting electrons. Both of them are bonding pairs of electrons. And so this would simply be a linear molecule. Let's try another example. Let's try COH2. Okay. Again, you can take a second and maybe uh, pause the video and try to get the best Lewis structure for that. What you should get as being the best Lewis structure would look like this. And what we have here is the following. So how, how would we, what, what would be, be the shape of this? Well, in this case, we have a central atom with three bonding, air pla three places we're putting electrons around the central atom. And so in this case, we would have a trigonal planar molecule. All three of these are in the same plane. I'm going to make a triangle. So they're, same, they're in the plane of the paper. One thing to keep in mind is we could ask ourselves, what would the, uh, what would the bond angles be between these? Well, we know that a trigonal planar, an ideal trigonal planar molecule, where we would have three equal things or three things that are the same around a central atom would have 120 degrees. But if we look at this, the double bond, it's gonna take more space. There are more electrons there. There are also more electrons around the oxygen. The oxygen is essentially taking more electrical, electric space. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna push, push the hydrogens down together, which are bonding pair, bonding pair interactions and here we have a double bond. Double bond is going to essentially take, be a, be a, a, um, have greater repulsion between the double bond here and here because of the greater, num greater electron density between the carbon and the oxygen. So the double bond takes more space and we get something that's a little bit less than 120 degrees here and a little bit greater here. So, so for, for, for multiple bonds, we're just going to treat them as single electron pairs. Quite simple. Let's think about other cases where we have things going on. Molecular geometries where we have larger molecules. Let's look at some larger molecule examples. And what I mean by a larger molecule example is this. Let's say, for example, we are given um, an HNO2, and we want to come up with the best Lewis structure for that. The best Lewis structure for that, after taking into account formal charges and everything else, should look something like this. And the question is, what are the different bond angles here? 
within this molecule. So molecules with no central atom, there's not a central atom here. There, what you can do, so for, if we look at this molecule alone, there's not a central atom. But what we can do is we can cover up the rest of the molecule and treat then this as a central atom and then examine the geometry here, for example. Or we can treat this as a central atom and examine the geometry of the bonds around the oxygen. So that's what we're going to do. Now, you may, you may be able to do this in your, in your mind, meaning I'm going to ignore everything else and just look at the geometry here, but, um, uh, or, or you might have to cover it up with your finger. So if we're thinking about the geometry, what would be the bond angle? The H-O-N bond angle, we could ask ourselves. What would that be? Well, let's cover up the molecule, the part of the molecule that we're not interested in looking at. And what do we have here? Well, we have four places we're putting electrons. That would mean it has the, the oxygen has a tetrahedral electron pair geometry. So the bond angle between these is going to be uh, about 109. Uh, uh, it'll be, it'll be a, a less than about 109.5, so say 109 degrees or something like this. Why is it going to be less than 109? Well, we have the two bonding, non-bonding pairs of electrons. The lone pairs of electrons are taking more space. And like we saw with the water molecule, they're going to be pushed, these, these bonding pairs of electrons are going to be pushed together a little bit more. So it'll be a little less than 109.5. Let's think about what the bond angle would be between the oxygen, nitrogen, oxygen. So in other words, what's this bond angle. So what would the oxygen-nitrogen-oxygen bond angle be in this molecule? Well, in this case, again, let's cover up the rest of the molecule that we're not interested in, either with your finger or, with your, or in your mind, just focus on this part. With the nitrogen, what we have is three places we're putting electrons around the central atom single bond remember we treat double bonds as being single bonds essentially for molecular electron for, for for geometries and we have a lone pair so there are three places we're putting electrons around the central atom and so that would mean it's a trigonal planar geometry around this nitrogen and so we would say that it's about 120 degrees between these it's probably it's going to be it's going to be very difficult for for us to make a, a very accurate guess but we could say about 125 degrees or 120 degrees excuse me so this is this is the 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 um the strategy you want to take when you're looking at molecules that have um, that have multiple uh, larger molecules and you can do this and it works very well let's do another example let's look at this molecule here so here I've got three carbon atoms and six nitrogen hydrogens. What would be the bond angle between this hydrogen and this carbon? Well, again, ignore the rest of the molecule. Look at this central carbon here. Ah, it has three places we're putting electrons around it. That means it is going to have a trigonal planar geometry. So the bond angle of that is going to be about 120. How about the bond angle between these two hydrogens? Ah, well, again, cover up the part, either in your mind or with your hand, about what the part you're not interested in seeing. And we have a tetrahedral electron pair geometry, which means that the angle there would be about 109.5. How about this carbon? What would be the bond angle between this hydrogen 
and this carbon here. So the bond angle between those two things. Ah, okay, again, let's cover up the parts we're not interested in. And so we have a carbon with three places we're putting electrons around it. That means it is a trigonal planar geometry and it would be about 120 degrees from one another. So this is the strategy to take when it comes to um, you doing larger molecules. Just look at the central atom, pretend it's a central atom, much like the examples we looked at before, and go from there. All right, the final topic of this chapter deals with dipole moments. Okay, a dipole is quite simply, it's a measure of the degree of polarity. It's a measure of the, of the degree of polarity or charge separation within a molecule. within a molecule. It's going to depend on bond polarity and molecular geometry. Here are some examples to look at. Now, there's also there's a table in your textbook that can that sometimes people people find help to be helpful. Um, table ten point one. What it has is a table of relationships between molecular geometry and dipole moment. Um, a dipole moment is just is quite simply a, a non-zero dipole moment means that the molecule there's a charge separation. One end of the molecule has a different charge than the other. Okay, so so this is this can be helpful. You can refer to this. I, we, we may refer to this as we go back. So let me, give me give you a few examples. That's always a good way to, to do this. Now with dipole moments, the best, one of the best ways to do this is to, or to figure out if something has a dipole moment, is to think about the molecule in three dimensions and ask yourself, is one end of the molecule going to have a different electron density than the other end? So let's look at a few examples. Let's say we have CCl4. We would draw... And then let's look at another example, CHCl3. So let's draw the Lewis structure for both of these. So the best Lewis structure for CCl4, carbon tetrachloride, would look like this. And remember, these are arranged in a tetrahedron. This is coming out at us. This is going back into the plane of the, black of the, of the uh, paper. So we could draw it like this if we wanted to, to remind ourselves of that. And these three atoms of the molecule are in the plane of the paper. Now, if you think about this, is, is this a polar molecule? Okay, well, we, we, no matter, one way to think about it is if we come at the molecule from this end, we see a bunch of chlorines. If we come at the molecule from this side, we see a bunch of chlorines and so on. So this molecule would, ha would have, uh, is, was, would be nonpolar would be a nonpolar molecule or another way to put it, there would be no dipole moment. That's what we would predict. Let's think about CHCl3. So in this case, okay, our best Lewis structure for this would look something like this. And the question is, would this molecule have a dipole moment? And the answer is yes. Why would that be? It's a polar molecule. This end of the molecule is very electron-dense and electron-rich. 
whereas this end of the molecule is not. So if you come at the molecule from this angle, you'd see a proton, but if you come at the molecule from this side, you'd see all of these electrons, and so this molecule would be polar. One way we might illustrate this is, is to illustrate the fact that this end is going to be more positively charged than that end, and the electron density would go sort of in that direction. One of the classic examples of a molecule that is polar or has a dipole moment is water. If we draw the Lewis structure for water, what we have here are one side of the molecule has lone pairs, the other side does not. So we'd have a very positive side of the molecule and the electron density is over on this side. So this would be a polar molecule and it would have a dipole moment 